All right, looks like we can go ahead and get started. All right, so thank you everyone for attending today's webinar with Renvu Solar and SD Wind Energy. Uh, I am Chris with Renvu Solar. I am the product manager for the uh, wind products and the battery storage products. And then we also have Richard uh, heading the technical side uh, over at SD Wind, and he'll be doing the main part of the presentation today, and I'll be doing a couple of the first slides as, uh, as Richard uh, controls the slide deck. We can go ahead and go to the next slide. Oh yeah, also, uh, just wanted to let you know that, uh, that this webinar is being recorded. Uh, so uh, the slides in the recording will be sent over to you uh, if you'd like after. Uh, so Renvu was founded in 2012. Uh, we're headquartered in Mountain View, California. We have several fulfillment centers. Uh, so we have warehousing over in California, Texas, and New Jersey, and we ship internationally as well. And our sales team is comprised of all engineers, or uh, we all have an engineering background. Um, so if you, ever, if you ever need any technical support or technical advice, uh, we're ready to help you. And you can go to the next slide. Yep. Uh, so some of the services we provide, um, these are some of them, but we're not limited to them. Uh, include on-site analysis, professional engineering services, including PE stamps, permitting plans, um, you name it, uh, we can do it generally. Uh, we also have uh, business credit terms. Uh, we also work with some companies who offer financing for businesses and homeowners. So if you need that, uh, please feel free to let us know and we can get you set up with that or help you out with that. Uh, we also purchase some of your access inventory if you ever have any. Uh, that's unused, uh, just let us know and, and we can discuss, uh, you know, what, what you can get off your hands. And uh, we also have the Megawatt Club, very popular among our installers. It, it entails free shipping for all your shipments uh, for a full year. And this also includes uh, wind materials as well. And we can go to the next slide. So including uh, uh, adding to some of the services we have, uh, we also have the solar kit guide, the battery upgrade guide, uh, and, and some other calculators on our website, which allow the installer to design their own systems uh, pretty easily without needing much background knowledge. And it's also uh, generally pretty straightforward for homeowners as well. Uh, we also have a wind website uh, now, which is very new. Um, and then here we have uh, our solar kit guide. Uh, this is just a quick look at what it looks like. You can see the build materials on the left. We can go to the next slide. And then we also have the battery uh, backup guide and the battery upgrade guide. And so here you just see a little depiction of uh, us asking about your load uh, demand. And we can go to the next slide. And then this is our new wind website. So this is where you're gonna find all of our wind products win specials, uh, and then also you can just call our main number if you ever have any questions about uh, our wind products. And we can go to the next slide. So we just uh, rolled out a new program. Uh, if you'd like to become a Renvu approved SD wind installer, you can participate. Well, one of the requirements is to participate in the SD wind energy technical training. And then the other requirement is to install at least one SD wind turbine. And then from there, uh, we can set up a special pricing agreement. And then also we'll be referring you uh, leads that we get to, through our website. And that about wraps it up for us. And then Richard, I'll go ahead and hand it over to you. Okay, thanks Chris. And uh, morning everyone. Uh, just like to introduce the the SD Wind product uh, and the design of the turbine, which makes it quite unique. The turbine is a downwind design, and it is totally passive control, and it never requires to be shut down in any strength of wind. Uh, the the turbine is designed and built in Scotland. Uh, we have uh, taken the, the, 
the weather and, and the conditions uh, from the the north to, to develop a turbine which is very robust can survive in uh, extreme conditions and simplify the design and that's what I would like to cover today is the the simple design of the turbine from the rotor design through. So you can see here that the the turbine uh, is manufactured from uh, steel, all hot dip galvanized, so it's very good for corrosion. We also do marine versions whereby the springs are inconel material instead of stainless. But when we look at the, the main thing here is there is no gearbox because we know the the speed and the power from the rotor that can be max we are able to do a direct drive system onto a, a purpose-built generator that we actually manufacture in-house so the the rotor design as you can see the wind is actually coming onto the back of the blade across from the generator and each blade itself is mounted on a hinge mechanism that when the centrifugal force pulls on the, the blade as it spins faster the blade actually flattens and the blades pitch and when the blade hinge is completely flat the lift on either side of the blade is equal so that will be the maximum speed that the, the actual turbine can rotate at. Secondly, we have each blade mounted on a, a spring uh, and as the wind increases in force that spring will stretch and the blades will cone and the swept area of the turbine is then reduced and you can see that in this uh, slide here the actual area taken that is capturing wind is reduced so that means that we reduce the forces on the turbine also so that lends itself that uh, even in hurricanes uh, we have had recorded wind speeds well over 100 mile an hour. Uh, the turbine continues to perform uh, right through. It doesn't turn out the wind, it stays in the wind, so that also helps with the uh, gyroscopic forces on the, the bearings. We currently manufacture two models of turbine. One is a three kilowatt, one is a six kilowatt. So the SD3 wind turbine. Uh, rotor diameter is, is 3.9, just short of four meters diameter. Uh, we manufacture for a number of voltages. It can be either on grid or off grid and can charge in the SD3 model 24, 48 volt batteries. Uh, and the 300 volt is for the, the grid connect. Quite a low cut in wind speed at 2.5 meters a second and there is a number of tower heights there for the monopole and later on in the presentation I'll cut to a video of a, a monopole being put together and raised and a SD6 turbine being installed on it. But we also can provide lattice towers and uh, some guide towers to uh, greater heights, 80 foot up to 120 foot if required. SD6 turbine. Turbines are all designed uh, exactly the same. Uh, the only thing that's changing there is obviously the generator size and the, the diameter of the, the, the rotor. And the springs again that's for the six kilowatt turbine it's a 2.5 meter uh, cut-in uh, and 
tower options there in the monopoles, we can actually go to a 20 meter monopole tower there for the six kilowatt. The next few slides are, are basically a model of the turbine and I'm basically going to uh, run through each component and uh, so that you have an understanding of how this turbine is designed and then for the actual installation itself. So the turbine, all the turbines are, are obviously three bladed in a space frame with a permanent magnet generator. The covers themselves are polypropylene covers that are actually held on with cable ties so that uh, during maintenance periods, which is every two years for the turbine, uh, it's a simple uh, replacement of cable ties and very light covers to work with. So that's the actual space frame itself without the covers on and the tower coming up uh, through. And we can see there that there is no gearbox uh, within there. Back cover there is the what we call the nose cone, and that is basically on the if I go back the the up one side, so the wind is coming on, hence it's domed, and that helps with the aerodynamics of the wind cutting across there onto the blades. Main shaft, very simple, uh, and it's keyed to drive the, the magnet plates, but uh, fully, it's S, SD50 steel, uh, solid, and the welds, we have two different types of procedure, so we can manufacture the shaft to withstand uh, minus 60 degrees C, so for very low temperatures, there's a specialised shaft that, that's actually put into the, the framework. There are only three self-aligning bearings on the turbine, two on the rotor shaft and one for the actual tower. The generator, has, it's a very robust generator in that we have a toroidal winding with a steel core. Uh, to kill all the and suppress all the eddy currents and losses within it. And on each side of that core, there are two magnet plates. Those are driven by the shaft and we turn the magnets so that there is no brush gear or maintenance required within the generator itself. So technically you can say that there is no moving electrical parts in the head of the, the generator. Coupled with that, there is a, a slip ring for the, the down cable, but there is no electronics, there's no motor drives or anything in the head. So it, again, that leads to it being very reliable. There is a mechanical disc brake in the head, and that is basically for maintenance, for lowering the turbine or if you're working at heights, the mechanical brake can be, be applied at the base of the tower, then the tower climbed and maintenance and greasing of the bearings can be done uh, at that time. The brake is not used in any form for the operation of the turbine for slowing it. It's only to park the blades while maintenance has been done. And that's where it sits within the, the shaft. The small black dots, if you can see them there, are four rubber bushes that go into the frame. And those are changed every two years uh, as a serviceable item. And those parts are at the bottom of the, the frame there and sustain the, the rotation and take the forces off the main yaw bearing. And that's where they sit there and the yaw bearing for the tower comes up through there and everything rotates uh, on that balance point on the tower. So what I would like to do just now is I'm going to skip out of uh, this presentation and I'll show you a tower build video and then there will be the actual head. 
Each video is, uh, is time lapsed uh, and lasts about one minute, guys. Now for the actual head on the turbine. So in that video there, you, you saw it, it lends itself very well to very remote locations. That was a, an island uh, installation of, uh, there was six, six kilowatts going in there. So all that was required was a, a small telehandler or digger uh, for just for assembly at, at that time. The turbine, the six kilowatt turbine weighs uh, 600 kilos, about 1,300 pounds, uh, and the three kilowatt weighs uh, roughly half that, again about 600 pounds in weight. So it's not something that can be easily manhandled. You do need some lifting equipment for the first of. When you come to servicing the, the turbines though, uh, there is no requirement for any cranes or anything. You either have a winch climb the tower or hydraulic rams to, to lower to the ground to work. The other thing uh, this morning that I would like to just uh, touch on as ins installers is to look at where you should actually site a turbine uh, and gain the, the, the best wind resource because obviously uh, the cleaner the air uh, and less turbulence, the better the turbine performs. So in this slide we can we can see there's a there's a rule of thumb for any uh, turbine for where you position a turbine for any obstruction. So <clears throat> on the left hand side the wind is coming from left to right here and you see the the height of the the, the house or the, that can be any obstruction. If you are on the prevailing wind side, the up wind side for 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 us for ourselves for our, our turbine, you would go twice the height distance. So if the if it was a ten meter tall house, you'd be twenty meters to have clean air uh, from and no turbulence from uh, that dwelling. If you're downwind uh, of the prevailing, what you need to either have is twice the height, a 20 metre tower, if you're coming inside, or you need to be 20 times the height outwards for the best position. Now, 
that rule of thumb uh, is something to 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 bear in mind when you're you're actually looking at a site to where to put it. There's other things there, obviously, for cabling and if there's utilities that that have to be be looked at, but. The obvious thing is always to have an open perspective to the prevailing wind with no obstructions. The taller the tower, the better, uh, and to min minimise the, the turbulence. Our turbine, the SD turbine, lends itself well to turbulent sites because each blade works independently on the hinge and spring mechanism, so we can actually absorb some of the the other turbulence, we find that we are asked to install our turbines in marine areas where there's cliffs for lighthouses and things where other turbines wouldn't, wouldn't survive. Uh, we find that we can uh, take the vortexes from the cliffs. Obviously, if we can sight further back, we will, but quite often uh, space is, is minimalistic. So that's why we, we we tend to to find ourselves in these positions that we we are being required by lighthouse boards to to provide the the wind element to their hybrid systems. So always uh, try and determine the, the the wind prevailing direction, and we can do that with uh, we have a, and I'll mention it later, but we have a a wind prospecting tool. So any coordinates, we offer a free service to actually do the wind rows and what the average uh, wind speed is. Another thing there is the distance of the turbine. And we have calculators for you for off-grid where the current is higher and for on-grid where the current is lower and we have a higher voltage for sizing your cable. And we always have that it should not exceed 4% so that you do not lose power in the cable. So you can position the turbine into a clean area away from obstructions and then size the cable. And just a, a, it's, a, it's a basic thing there. And it's a thing, trees grow, trees grow, towers don't. Uh, quite often, uh, a turbine, because we we build the turbine, the lifespan of the turbine will be uh, 20 years. Uh, when you first install a turbine, uh, it might just be small small saplings, but in 20 years time, the trees have grown and do that. So you need to, to bear that in mind when you're, you're actually siting the turbine. Over the, uh, the year, uh, wind speeds vary. They also vary year to year. So when we do your wind speed reading, uh, it's an average over several years. So, and then we can calculate just how much power that you can expect from the turbine uh, at any point in time. Over uh, any locations uh, on site in the turbine, it can vary, even at, at 100 meters, it can vary. Uh, so there's there's guidelines there, but what we also offer as a service, if, if photographs are taken uh, for the desktop survey, we can give you guidance uh, to where best it would uh, suit. Within the, the, the winter summer ratio, uh, that does vary. Obviously, if you're in Southern Hemisphere, uh, the summer you, you would tend to get a little bit more uh, wind at that time. but what it lends itself well is with the turbine is with hybrid systems as well where you incorporate solar uh, and it complements the solar uh, during the winter months when there isn't much uh, sun. Just a, a small indication there when I'm talking about meters per second I know that some people uh, prefer the uh, miles per hour and the different scales in knots so that's just a little bit there, and when the slides are, are distributed to, to you, it will actually show what it actually means. And then on the Beaufort scale there, for what the actual uh, 1 to 10 ratios are, and what the wind speeds actually come to. 
another thing uh, to look at is is the the growth there. So the prevailing wind is obviously coming from left to right there. Uh, it's distorted the, the tree growth. We wouldn't recommend anything below five meters a second uh, wind speed. Uh, there are there are instances with larger rotors and things that can be done, but you won't get the optimum from the turbine. Five to seven meters a second average wind speed is, is uh, absolutely adequate. It's it's what we publish the data at for the annual energy production. But on the anything above seven meters a second becomes very a very good uh, wind regime where you will get a lot more power. Wind is a cube law, so if you double the wind speed, you get eight times the power. So it only takes a small increase in the average wind speed, but you'll find that your 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 kilowatt hours that you're going to gain from the turbine is uh, greatly increased. So what we can we can actually do as well is is look at what the the wind speed is. And then through the rally distribution, we can then gain what the annual energy production is. Rather than just looking at what the wind speed is uh, at any one time and taking the power, that's instantaneous. So you could have a wind speed one day at 11 meters a second, it produces six kilowatts. But then the other 364 days, uh, it's only five meters a second. It's it's down, so that that this is a way that we can calculate what you can gain throughout the year in the average. So that that helps with sizing batteries, and uh, if you're off grid, or if you have an incentive, how much you would actually be offsetting your utility grid power. And that's just an example of the wind prospecting tool. Uh, and that's that's the shows the report that you would get from ourselves uh, with the average wind speed in the middle there. You can see the wind rose, and as long as we get the longitude and latitude uh, coordinates anywhere on the globe, we are able to perform that for you and give you an indication. There are a number of uh, anemometers and things there, but. When you look at for accurate data for to do that, we've found that it's not worth spending the money on that when it's a small scale wind turbine. The prospecting tool gives a, a reliable enough indication that whether or not the, the, the site is good for wind. And that's just showing that you what the, the wind rose is from the the way that that is uh, presented. And you can see that on this one, that the wind is mainly coming from the the south uh, there. So you would, when you are in the, the site, that's how you would be able to, to look and know that that wind direction and, and sight the turbine uh, on the, the prevailing wind and not wind there. So, quick summary on the on the sighting of the turbines is that wind is highly variable. Where where solar, uh, it's very gradual. If there's uh, clouds coming and uh, things going, wind is there's instantaneous gusts. So what you find with a turbine as well is you will have power uh, can vary between uh, a six kilowatt, you could be two, two kilowatts, and then in 10 seconds later, you can be producing the six kilowatts. The electronics and the control uh, take that and feed the batteries or into the utility and they react fast enough. So that's something to bear in mind. Uh, and using the power curve, uh, we can establish much better how much power how much energy you're going to get from the, the turbine. And then we can look at payback, obviously periods, and also sizing the full system. Now this, this then couples in with uh, solar for hybrid systems. 
and how that, that can be used for the, the battery sizing. So I think that that's the, the, the slides finished uh, and that part of the presentation. And I think now we can go and uh, look at some of the questions. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Richard. Thank you very much for that. And uh, yeah, that's our contact information right there. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to info at renbu.com is the main, in, uh, main contact for any sales related questions or technical related questions. And then also, uh, you have SD wind energies contact right there. If you wish to reach out to them. Um, so for the first question, uh, we have, uh, asking two years max, can the rubber vibration dampers without removing the hold turbine from the tower? Yes, they're simply they're mounted on four uh, bolts, and it's just a, a removal. The, the rubber bushes, it's as I say, it's a more of a preventive maintenance. Uh, changing those, uh, so we would always recommend that. And, and as I say, it's 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 four ten ten mil bolts on the the three and four twelve mil bolts on the the six kilowatt, and they easily just uh, loosen off the nuts, pull the, pull the, the, the bolt out, and uh, it's a simple replacement. Gotcha. Thank you for that. And then for the next question, we have a request asking you to go over the installation manual real quick. Is that possible? A, it will, it, I can, I think, I think it would, it would be best if we, uh, yeah, you we can go on our website and, and download the, the manual. It's quite comprehensive. Sure, sure. Yeah, you we can, can... You can. You can download the, the manual, and then if there's any questions, fire, fire us through an email or anything there. Yep, that, yeah, that works. If, yeah, for any of you who have questions about the installation manual or you need that information, we can always send that over to you, uh, as well as any schematics that you may need. Um, I actually have a question. Uh, so we actually, I get a lot of inquiries about the mounting solution for this. Do you mind going into the different um, uh, mounting solutions for this and the different towers that are available? Yeah, I mean, all yeah, the, the, the towers that are available, uh, we we have the the monopole that you saw in the video there, which is a, a hydraulic uh, ram at the base that, that detaches from the tower and it is simple to, to raise and lower. Then you, you we can also do this, the lattice tower, which is assembled in the, you can have that to lower by, by means of a winch and a gin pole, uh, or basically a, a fixed tower that you can, you can actually climb and work on the, the, the turbine uh, in situ at height. Uh, the the maintenance period uh, the the well in the maintenance all all that's required is to grease the two bearings uh, visually inspect the the blades the springs change the four rubber bushes and that's the maintenance complete so it's not we, we say on a, on a maintenance on a monopole tower to, to raise and lower. The raising and lowering actually takes just as much time as what the, the actual uh, service requirement actually is. So we can go from uh, 80, with the, with the lattice towers, as I said, 80 foot to up to 120 foot. And on the three kilowatt, we do a, quite a small tower, a, a six, a nine, and a 15 meter, which is about 45 foot mono, monopole ram tower, or we can actually have a gin pole tower. Um, Great, thank you for that. Is the, now is, are the towers actually required uh, to be, do you need those exact towers to be installed with those turbines? No, we, we can actually install an other other towers. We we do have a program that we're rolling out globally 
Uh, we've been doing it in the UK and in Asia just now for replacing uh, other manufacturers that are, are no longer uh, in, in business. Uh, orphan turbines, I think we're, we're now terming it. And we, as long as we can get the original uh, specification, we can do the calculations on the tower and we can manufacture. You, you've seen the, the tower mount getting put onto the tower. Uh, it's a small, smaller flange spigot, so we can actually mount that onto existing towers. We've recently just uh, replaced a turbine in Nebraska uh, using that method. Great, and is that with the both the three kilowatt and the six kilowatt uh, uh, versions yeah. of the turbine? Okay, great. Yeah. All right, and then so the next question is: What is the prospect of using uh, SD wind turbines for telecommunication in Nigeria and especially in Abuja? Uh, we have, we have that is that that is a good prospect. We we have uh, several telecoms systems already operating with the the turbines. Uh, South America and Patagonia, there's a number of uh, SD threes and six kilowatts. In uh, Nigeria, we have we already have some turbines at the main airport uh, in Nigeria, but also uh, in Africa and Nairobi and Saudi Aramco used the the six kilowatt turbines on their uh, radio stations on their pipelines. Great, great, thank you. Yeah, Kenneth, uh, if you if you're interested in moving forward with with any projects with uh, SC Wind Energy, please feel free to reach out to us and we can discuss that project further. Um, next question is: How many man hours do you use as an estimate from opening the first box to complete installation? If you've got two two technicians, we would say the mechanic. We always say the mechanical will be one day. Uh, and the electrical uh, would be the next day, and that would include the, the actual commissioning. So we, we'd, we'd say two days on site uh, from opening the, the crate to, to actually having the, the system commissioned. Okay, great, great. So uh, one of the first questions we got earlier was that you mentioned having a grid tied energy uh, or having a battery backed uh, grid tied setup do you mind going into the different uh, electrical schematics that the that the turbine is capable of yep certainly uh, if I... yeah you don't have to necessarily show it you well, if, if you'd like I mean well, what, if, on, <laughs> on the on the off off grid systems we can either have a, a pure off grid system where you have a battery and it can be supplying DC for a, for instance for a telecom system, uh, and that can be twenty four volts or forty eight volts DC. With that, what we have is we have the the turbine, we have our, our rectifier and fusing, and then we would have a like a solar charger. For instance, the Morningstar MPPT one hundred and fifty is what we would use with our SD three and SD six turbines. Uh, with a grid tie, uh, we would have any, there's different types of uh, solar inverter. We, we prefer the, the ABV uh, DM systems because they're fast reacting. But a solar inverter uh, with a small control module in front allows it to take our power curve from the turbine. So you would have the turbine, rectifier to DC and the DC just as you would have solar panels feeding into the inverter and the inverter being grid tied at that point. We also have <coughs> systems whereby we can have microgrids so you would have a centralized uh, battery bank uh, with a grid network coming off, uh, for instance, an SMA Sunny Island inverter, and then the turbines feeding into the 230 or 120 uh, ring network there. So there's, there's any combination of off-grid, on-grid, micro-grid, 
we we have the solutions and the you know this this is something that we've been doing now for a, a number of years especially the microgrids okay great um looks like we don't have any further questions thus far um i guess we can wait just a bit to see if there's any more questions so otherwise we can go ahead and wrap up And then also, just to let everyone know, um, we, we're open to questions after as well. Um, the webinar is gonna be sent uh, to you if you request it, and also it's gonna be posted on YouTube. Um, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up if there aren't any further questions. So thank you everyone for taking the time uh, to watch the webinar and uh, learn more about the uh, turbine itself and the systems that it's compatible with. And thank you very much, Richard, for taking the time to explain uh, to all our new customers for this product. No thanks, and thanks everybody for uh, joining the webinar. And if there is anything further, uh, please don't hesitate to, to contact the guys at Renewia. You can go onto our website and uh, download some more, more data there. And <clears throat> with the schematics, anything that you require, manuals, uh, please don't hesitate to contact us and we can share that with you.